So I guess a bit of pre-show because it's not really interesting otherwise. I had a home kit failure that I didn't have before. Do you want to guess what it was? What? Um, let's see. I think you've talked about your light switch and cameras this time? Nope. It's, it is about light switches. It is about light so switches. Dang. It's not about light switches not being able to connect. It's about light switches just not working when you go and press on them. They otherwise... Really? Turn on, connect to Wi Fi, operate via HomeKit, but they do not activate the little relay on the inside. And I'm like, hmm, this is the, the number one uh, fallback mechanism for HomeKit devices that are allowed in the house. Yeah. Is they need to operate as, as basic, basic thingamajigs. Uh, so I, I went ahead and got a new light switch, uh, which is oh, nice. the, the update, the Gen 2 version of the exact same thing that I had. Um, I can, I can reasonably say that the Gen 2 version is fancier in that it comes with a wall plate that hides the screws. Um, and that uh, was cool. Very fancy. Uh, and it works. Um, the, That's the one important. that was in there, uh, like came back to life for a split moment right after I placed the Amazon order. Like it, it the light suddenly, Hey, the lights are charged. And then like an hour later, Hey, I thought the light switch was working. What happened? <laughs> Jeez, dude. Yeah, and this was I... the bathroom light switch, so we we uh we overnighted a oh. new switch because that is uh, not Semi acceptable for the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's a bummer. I have not had such problems with mine, luckily, and I have them now. Let's say I have one, two, three, four. I have five in my house. You yeah, that was definitely work. the the only time that has ever happened. But weird. Yeah, but that's scary though. I I get the immediate replacement. Yeah. So, home kit. Yeah. I guess this one's on home kids. Smart home devices or internet. Yeah. No, not even internet of things. It's just the 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 <laughs> basic device died, which I guess Yeah, happens. that's weird. I guess right? so. Yeah. It seems interesting that just that part died if you could still trigger it through HomeKit and everything. But maybe. Uh, in better news, I will get a timestamp to start the show proper. Okay. Otherwise, we have a pre show. The very rare occurrence. Yes. <laughs> a rare and elusive. <clears throat> Okay, real this time. All right. Hello and welcome once again to episode 124 of Code Completion. We're a group of iOS developers and educators hoping to share what we love most about development, Apple technology, and completing your code. My name is Dimitri and I'll be your host once again for this episode and I'm joined today by my fellow completionist, Spencer. Hey there. Uh, so we've had uh, uh, quite a lot of drama this week out of most mm -hmm. weeks um, that I've noticed. Um like some uh, very tame along the lines of, hey, do you remember the guy that roasted uh, Microsoft Vista on uh, Apple's like keynote time, uh, Bertrand Serled, who like ran the Mac OS like software division? Well, it turns out he's working for Microsoft now. That just happened. Um, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so, yeah, it was the weird drama like that um, exists. Yeah. Uh, but we also have non-drama, and the non-drama is that Swift is getting custom executors, uh, which is yeah. both awesome uh, and kind of useless for most app developers, <laughs> which is uh, kind of fun to say. Um, but yeah, this is a new proposal that's going through the Swift Evolution uh, process. Yeah, so it's a pretty long proposal. So, and uh, honestly, I didn't understand all of it, but there were a couple parts that like made sense to me. So it it's kind of with uh, custom actors and being able to execute things. So, um, in the introduction, it kind of says, "Let's see." Um, yeah, well, I'll just start from the start here. As Swift concurrency continues to mature, it's becoming increasingly important. Uh, to offer adopters tighter control over where exactly as asynchronous work is actually executed because actors just kind of do that for you. Mm -hmm. um, and so they in one of the motivations, it talks about like, um, 
you the code may need to cooperate with an existing system that expects code to be run in a certain way. It may depend on being run on a specific system thread, or perhaps it may benefit from the, from the developer being more explicit about where it should run. Um, and kind of a, uh, I guess, kind of a cool side thing with that is like with the existing system was, um, perhaps there's this entire system that's, uh, kind of protecting some state with a shared queue, uh, not using actors. Uh, it says sort of with, uh, the actor pattern, you could probably, uh, transplant that it's fairly transferable. It's kind of doing the same thing. But with these executors, it could be a little bit easier because you could use sort of existing code as the executor for the actor uh, to be able to sort of incrementally uh, update this. And that would be sort of one example, but th there are quite a few things that you can do with it that honestly, like Dimitri said, I couldn't think of a use for. So I'm kind of leaning off of the uh, proposal itself to try to think of actual uses for it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely in the land of it's making less magical what is already there. Like, we already have two sure. kinds of executors. One is the main threat, main actor, uh, and the other is individual actors, right? All individual, like, instances of actors, those can all run uh, independently, but within an actor, it's all uh, synchronous. Um, right. I don't want to say serial because that's not what this uh, proposal gets to at all. Um, and I'd say that's probably the missing part of Swiss concurrency for like app developers uh, is we don't have that serialness uh, to tasks that get submitted. Um, and that means that if you have a delegate that uh, might be calling into an actor, there's no guarantee that the order in which the delegate calls were made is the order in which mm. uh, individual tasks that call to your actor are going to be executed because... Uh, it can reserve the right to reshuffle things to uh, get rid of priority inversion and stuff like that. So um, this is not solved for that. Um, and that would be like a completely different way of solving something that I've done in the past is, hey, keep track of a task. And then when the next task runs, make sure the previous one finishes and then assign the next task to that previous one. So you kind of make an artificial chain this way um, that would satisfy the requirements of like um thread safety and stuff like that but uh it also gives you that serial execution um across boundaries which uh can be very useful uh this does not give you any of that unfortunately as far as i know um again it's long it's complicated it's uh, yeah. it's very low level um but uh it as as spencer said allows you to uh, adapt the swift concurrency model to like an existing thread system if you need to um or like specifically hey you don't need to think that main actor is magic anymore it's just an executor that is yeah. implemented on the first thread of an app uh basically um so that's that's like the magic removal bits of this um or you can go ahead and do more interesting things like hey these set this set of actors they are all kind of uh, independent, but they are all going to run um, uh, synchronously, um, and they're not right. going to run concurrently with one another. Uh, so that kind of thing also becomes possible with this. I'm going to guess this is probably mostly related to distributed actors um, and being able to kind of run or not run, but uh, think of code as having as being run across a network or across uh, a different kind of paradigm sure. that's not like very well um, specified within the existing system. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just assume this has something to do with Swift Neo. Uh, whenever these kinds of uh, proposals come in, it's, just, it's probably safe to assume that Swift Neo needed it uh, for one purpose or another. Yeah, there. It, it, like now again, this thing is like freaking huge. There, I'm probably not going to be able to find it. But it did mention things like that. That also made me think like, oh yeah, this would like probably be something you'd be able to use in in Swift Neo and therefore Vapor. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where it was, but I was like, mm, yeah, like there's definitely something in sort of a more open source context that is probably going to be useful outside of. Uh, Apple, the Apple ecosystem. So, yeah. 
seems really cool though for as Definitely. little as i will ever use it <laughs> it's good to know about these things right because you never know when inspiration can strike uh and you, all sure. of a sudden you have a a tool at your tool belt um but uh on on the topic of things that just won't ever uh be too useful but are endlessly fun to talk about uh we have drama uh and the drama starts with uh the bank and economy is collapsing oh no it's gonna be 2008 all over again uh except maybe it won't because it seems like it's not as bad as it seems and everyone's gonna get their money and the tech industry is not deflated hooray yeah is that a good summary interesting silicon valley <laughs> yeah i guess so the silicon valley bank just like uh, sort of got shut down by regulators because I think everyone was trying to pull their money out at the same time and there was no money. So I think they, I, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong, I think they just stopped transfers or something or you weren't allowing people to uh, pull their money out because there was no money. It was probably in bonds or something. Um, yeah, so then the the government had to come in and, you know, like President Biden gave a thing that was like, everyone's going to have their money. Don't worry. It's all good. But it was, you know, it, over the weekend, it was kind of a whole a whole thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, you know, and uh, there's a Daring Fireball um, link that talks about they ha they didn't have. Let's see. What was it? A VP. Uh, oh, sorry. A chief risk officer uh, for much of 2022 and the one that was the the chief risk officer before then sold four million dollars of shares in 2021 so <laughs> she may have <laughs> known something so yeah kind of a yeah hard bail yeah so, that said this yeah. this bank has been around for 40 years and it, that's a pretty good run for a startup um sure like i'm just assuming yeah i guess silicon valley is a startup uh, but it definitely seems to be have to have been run like a startup. Yeah, I think the whole thing was that they primarily were the banker of uh, tech companies, startups, and everything like that, um, or and or perhaps employees of those tech companies. Um, so it was kind of in that zone. And I don't know if all the tech bros just got a whiff of something and they're like, "Oh crap, we need to pull out all their money." Yeah, uh, that whiff. It, that whiff was an investor meeting saying, oh, um, we're going to need like $3 billion. I, I don't remember the exact amount, but it's in the ballpark. Um, but oh, hey, uh, okay. we're going to need uh, $3 billion uh, from you investors because uh, we we made like a bad decision with bonds. Um, and that would give us some leverage. Uh, and I guess that got leaked to like certain individuals telling Ooh, them, hey, that's bad. Pull all your money immediately. Um, and that's like a bank's yeah. worst nightmare because... Although they have a certain amount of liquidity, uh, they don't necessarily have all of it. Um, and yeah. coming into Friday, it, ve it very much seemed like that was it. Like the the bank got depleted for everything it was worth. Um, and uh, the FDIC came in. And uh, this is that thing that, by the way, if you ever go to a, a branch of your bank, which is like a fairly uh non-common occurrence nowadays Rare but thing. they have these these yeah. uh, like stickers on every teller window saying like hey you are fdic insured for up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars um and yep. the way that works apparently is when the bank goes poof uh the government comes in and will issue checks up to that amount the only problem is this bank is probably one of the few where the majority of its accounts had much much more, more than, than two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollars like it's not personal uh funds it's uh like tech companies Startup. that have yeah millions upon millions of uh of uh like vc money uh stored away in there like roku had 25 percent of their capital which equated <laughs> yeah, to 500 million dollars uh so roku is just expecting Why 500 is... million dollars to go poof uh in that moment dude, in time side note though why is roku so freaking loaded dude they had 1.5 billion dollars just in cash okay that's well, nuts it, dude think of it this way like a million dollars is only a year salary for like five to ten people depending on how much no, you're i know like ten yeah, million dollars that's only how, 50 people a hundred million dollars it's only 500 right it's not that many employees yeah. at the grand scheme of things if everyone's an engineer so um like, yeah i guess so it's it's a whole lot of money that goes down 
I, I don't want to say down on a toilet because like I am a beneficiary of, of that money as part of working. Um, sure. So it's 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 a a good thing to have an engineering salary, but uh, like when you think of the company that needs to employ dozens upon dozens of employees, like they need a lot of capital yeah. uh, to be able to yeah. just run payroll. Um, and that was the number one concern out of this bank collapsing was not, oh, all these companies are going to go f- like down and yeah. all these poor billionaires are not going to have their money. Boohoo. No, it's going to be, hey, all these companies are not going to make good on their payments to employees come yeah. next Friday uh, when yeah. the biweekly payroll comes around. Um, that was like the number one concern. Uh, but uh, it seems like we didn't need to panic as much uh, because it turns out that the bank did have the capital there. Um, it was just stored away in other assets. Uh, so the only sure. downfall was everyone panicking to sell not to sell, to yeah. withdraw money all of a sudden because, like, when you when you hear wind of something bad happening, you, that, you, like, you, you panic. You fear the worst, right? Yeah. 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 And most importantly, you want to benefit off of the other people that also have money on the, in the bank, right? Because if, if it's not going to work out, you're going to basically be selling their money um, rather than have it be distributed equally. But uh, long story short, like people did that. Therefore, the bank went bust. It seems like the feds, what they do at this point in time is they go ahead and uh, just take ownership. They don't buy. They just take ownership um, of the bank in question. um, And then they distribute the remaining funds equitably uh, based on whatever is there. Uh, And thankfully, in this case, it seems like the assets did exist and they can be sold. Uh, to make up for that so it's not like taxpayers are going to be bailing out all these tech companies it's the tech companies are going to be bailing out themselves uh just like via via other assets yeah other assets that the bank itself owned and perhaps misinvested in and uh made the false move or the the wrong move of telling their investors Hey, we made a bad move. Uh, we need some help, um, and <laughs> yeah. th- like that leaking was the end of it. Like that's that's all yeah. it took. Yeah, not very tactful. Uh, or I suppose again, it could just be someone that leaked that, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, one one problem that that did surface when I was reading up on all of this is it seems like uh, there was some lobbying to remove restrictions on banks up to 250 billion dollars um and it seems like a uh, good old uh svb yep. here uh was only at 200 uh billion dollars um oh. and thanks to that lobbying uh that like window got moved out of of their uh, overlap for it uh so that means that they didn't need to be as heavily regulated to make sure that stuff like this wouldn't happen um Thankfully, it seems like once again it wasn't the the end of the world scenario that a lot of us feared. Um, but um, I guess let that be a, a a mental note in the future when we uh, see laws about uh, moving uh, these kinds of regulations out and like making it uh, easier for new players to get in um, because maybe those new players are just kind of being risky with funds. Um, and yeah, I guess let that be yeah. another lesson. If you want to run a business that deals with other people's money, uh, everything can go like down fast, uh, once the, the wrong word goes around. Um, so yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I mean, I really kind of, I hate, and I hate to say this cause I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know how to say this. Well, I mean, that's kind of like sort of uh um a i guess i'll say a potential advantage of something like cryptocurrency right where it's all decentralized or some way of decentralizing your currency where it's not kind of held in with other people it's just that obviously cryptocurrency is a terrible way of doing it right now so uh not not endorsing you to go buy bitcoin or anything but like the idea is there i mean it's like if you want your cash throw put it in a wall and 
have it in cash, but like that doesn't work great either. I don't know. There's not a good solution. That's what sucks, man. I mean, there's only so many millions of dollars you can hide under your mattress, Spencer. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know. I look. I've only got like five million under my mattress. The rest won't fit. I need to get like a taller uh, box spring or something. I don't know. <laughs> First world problems, but. In other news, uh, it seems Samsung came out with a new phone, and the only reason I know about this is because <laughs> apparently you can take pictures of the moon. Um, and yeah. uh, I, I guess this is more of a framing issue, right? Because if they said, hey, uh, our camera will kind of do its best to make your pictures look awesome. Hey, look, we're even going to make that moonshot that you tried time and time and time again look crisp through the magic of AI. Like, if they said that, cool. It's like a good application of AI. Find stuff that you know should look like something uh, and make it look like that. But instead, apparently, they marketed it as, hey, look, our camera's so good, you can zoom in on the moon and see craters. Um, and uh, this got bunked in the most amazing way possible. Through Reddit? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. This guy, yeah, it's super cool. So... Initially, this guy on Reddit um, kind of went through this thing, and then I this the, earlier today I watched a video from Marcus Brownlee that also kind of went through the the redditor's process. Um, but what he did was he took a picture, a high quality picture of the moon, uh, threw it on his monitor, uh, scaled it down to like 170 by 170 pixels, uh, put a Gaussian blur on it, so it's like. There is no moon information anymore. It's a white blob, right? Like there's no it's it's not yeah, it's it's low you can quality tell the but also blurred. If you squint, but there's sure, no characters. Yeah. There's definitely no There are no creators. yeah, there are, yeah, no craters. It's very I mean very indistinctly a moon, which to be fair, if you were to, you know, digitally zoom in on the actual moon itself on like an iPhone, that's probably what it would look like. So like you kind of see where he's coming from, and so what he did was, you know, turned off the lights, pointed his phone at it, put his phone to 100x zoom, and it just AI'd the crap out of it and made craters from literally nothing. So uh, From a fake moon. Yeah, kind of <laughs> fake moon, totally fake moon. Um, interestingly, in Marques Brownlee's video, he kind of walked through this, and he also said... Um, there's actually an article on how Samsung does this on like a Samsung forum, but it's only in Korean, but it does actually more or less detail that it's doing it through AI. It just seems like it wasn't published very well. So like you said, if they would have kind of uh, shifted the uh, viewpoint, I suppose, a little bit of this probably would have been a lot better, but it doesn't seem like the article got out there. It wasn't translated to any other languages. So yeah, I think it's more than anything like a marketing issue and not technically like this is a terrible thing. I don't know. It's interesting for sure. They could have changed their focus, so. right? Instead of focusing yeah. on uh, one camera capability, they could focus on the capability of their SOC. Um, yeah. But yeah, they didn't. Uh, but this is nothing new for, for Samsung. Um, but, uh, it is not unique to Samsung because apparently, um, and I don't have notes for this, but, uh, I, I, I went ahead and read that, uh, apparently Google pixels are essentially doing the same thing, uh, in a different way. Uh, namely, uh, they had a feature called magic erase, I think, where you just like tap on something and just yes. poof. Uh, and they said only the pixel phone, uh, can do this and no other phone can, uh, when it turns out that, hey, if you have a Google One subscription, so too can your iPhone. Through the magic oh. of downloaded silicon, uh, go ahead and uh, and uh, make stuff go magic poof. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, turns out there's, there's a lot of like very specialized hardware in all these devices. Yeah. Um, and Apple's like no no better at this because they they went yeah, ahead no. and and uh, said like hey the live text capabilities oh no we can't do that on uh, Intel Max uh, <laughs> and it turns out they could <laughs> they just had to spend effort yes. uh, which sure. uh, apparently management didn't want to do um, because uh, they had to be dragged through the mud to, to like add that capability 
Um, but yeah, that's that's a thing. Yeah, I uh, like you said. I think the biggest thing is just like how people frame it or companies frame it. I should say, because uh, it's like it's cool. It's actually a cool feature. If you want to take a big old picture of the moon, great. But like, make sure you know what it is. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and in Apple's case, like, so. don't lie that your silicon is like so much better that it can do it that only it can do a thing when the previous yes uh, hardware could definitely do that same thing um it's just yeah. you didn't want to put the effort into it it, it looks poorly it, it reflects poorly on you yeah doesn't seem like apple really needs to do that it's not like they're hurting for you know uh market share of phones or macs or anything maybe they are for macs i don't know whatever uh, and in a, a complete reversal of what we just said, uh, it seems like everyone actually is embracing ActivityPub in Macedon, which is very surprising. Um, it is. Uh, we we have Eugene Rochko, which is the creator of Macedon, that like uh, publicly said that hey, uh, if like companies like Meta are working on ActivityPub powered social networks, uh, he sees it as a very positive signal and. Even if he hates Meta, uh, which it seems like he does based on this toot, uh, it seems like yes. he is uh, confident that this is a sign that uh, this is the path forward for uh, interoperable social media. So um, I think uh, he he kind of nails it in that uh, if all these other big players, Meta, 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 Meta Facebook, if Facebook included, um, if they are all kind of playing a part in this um then i think it's it's something that uh it it basically means that it's on the right path right um and they're not alone medium uh which uh Mm -hmm. made searching for this very hard i searched for a medium activity pub and it turns out they have great seo because i got all the articles that people have written about activity pub on medium but not about medium having activity pub support so (laughs) uh, great google experience there um but medium uh, i think was one of the first ones that kind of said like hey if you have a medium account we're basically just gonna sign you up for uh not mastodon itself but uh to be part of this federated universe of uh servers and then wordpress basically bought uh one of the plugins that allowed this to happen they said hey we're just gonna embrace this um and then instagram i think it's only via rumors right um but yeah i think the whatever it is like the uh, i don't know if it's going to be a separate app or whatever but it's like in close super close beta i think it was kind of a leak more than anything Mm -hmm. yeah at the end of the day you get a two you get a two you get a two everyone gets a two um heck yeah and i think that's cool yeah, I, I, sorry, I was looking for that uh, MKBHD video, so you may have already said this, but in uh, the tweet from uh, Eugene Rochko, or you, you again, um, he, uh, the last part uh, I think is really nice. It says, it means the tide is really turning for interoperable social media, and that's always been the goal. So that's cool. I really like that. Yeah. Uh, a, a, like a, a prime example of how to be a great sport about uh the big leagues entering the yeah. game right uh because at the end of the game at the end of the day like he made the game so he's winning um and yeah uh, it lends credence to his idea where... mm-hmm. sorry no no, no. It, it's gonna be interesting where it goes yeah for sure it's cool that you know this thing that i i don't know how long mastodon's been around but this thing that you know hasn't really picked up any steam uh is now being you know obviously there was like the great twitter migration and everything but now like big companies are like yeah okay we'll we'll get behind this that's that's pretty crazy so it's exciting too to be like oh cool now i don't have to move to another social network again so yeah well it's all thanks to phony stark um i don't know who started that but uh have you heard that term before no so, it's a it's a new nickname for elon musk um because Phony it seems stuff. Like he wants that's to good be, <laughs> he wants to be the next uh iron man uh that's fair of uh be, be loved by the people um 
something that is surprisingly beloved by the people uh, is a brand new yellow iPhone uh, that came yeah. completely out of left field. Uh, though uh, Mark Gurman did say like, hey, a new color is imminent um, mm-hmm. like last week. I don't I don't think we even bothered covering it. Uh, but it turns out it was actually happening because now there's a yellow iPhone. Yeah, it's cool. There's a little bit of a precedent. I think they did this with like a purple iPhone last mm-hmm. year or the year before. Um, but like there's in Apple's in the Apple Newsroom article, there's a photo of kind of the lineup of uh, all the iPhone non pro colors and like yellow looks good. It's it's a good kind of complement with uh, the, the colors that already are there. So, uh, yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, it's interesting, I think, that they do this, have done this now tw- at least twice, where we're halfway through the the 14 generation, and they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll spin up production to put up a new color. I don't know how hard it is to, you know, mix some dyes or whatever for a new color, but uh, interesting if it's, like, just for, you know, to renew, like, get an article about the iPhone out there or, if, you know, I don't know. They just didn't have time to get everything going in time for the fall release originally or something. I don't know. But it's cool. That's that's a good point that you bring up, though, because it seems like Samsung just came out with a thing, right? I wouldn't even have heard about it if Mm. it weren't for the moon fiasco. Uh, but that's fair. Maybe like this is the point in time when Samsung comes out with stuff. So then, like two weeks later, Apple's like, "Hey, we have something new." (laughs) Um, and this is just like in their playbook. Uh, and yeah. we just all don't follow the Samsung thing, so we're just like, yeah, hey, this is random. Uh, but maybe it's yeah. maybe it's very purposeful. <laughs> um, I don't know. I didn't even look up what the new Samsung phone is called, so I don't know when it came out. It might have come out four years ago, and we're just now hearing about the the Moon thing. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's a that's an excellent point. Um, but um, s- yeah, so slightly. Uh, relevant to past uh how should i say um pains in my side that we i i think i talked about on the podcast like at the end of the year is uh my apple music rewind or replay or whatever it's called always sucks because i listen to classical music at night to sleep so uh apple music classical is out for sort of pre-order it you get it for free if you have apple music so my and you know i don't i don't really care about like the quality or i i saw someone on twitter mention like it's really hard to uh search for and find the right uh piece that you're looking for because classical music has like insanely long names so it's supposed to i think kind of facilitate that uh the search and being able to actually see the full name and stuff i don't care about any of that i just hope that it puts my classical music on a completely separate uh data sheet so my apple music rewind can actually be useful to me and kind of fun to share so yeah that's that's all i have to say about that i'm sure you have more but (laughs) spencer was very embarrassed by his uh by his uh tastes in classical music it seems because he did not want to share apparently that's what i got it's just no it's just boring i'm just like i it's just listen, you know, I, I'm listening to it on repeat eight hours a night. So it's always like your top X amount of songs are just always classical music, no matter how much music I listen to during work or whatever. So it's just boring. he didn't want folks to find out it's Chopin number four. <laughs> it is Chopin. Actually, that's the funny part. Which number four, though? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll never know. Uh, you'll never you know. can't read the title in the current Apple Music app. I don't think you can read it in this one unless it like marquees. Uh, but for whatever reason, unlike the new yellow iPhone, which just became available, this one is not available. You can pre-order it as if like it's it's a free app, I guess. It's an like, exclusive thing. Yeah, it's an exclusive yeah. free app. So it's like, why is it an order? Um, but anyways, uh, skeuomorphous words aside. Um, yeah, it's something that you can just like say you want to download and it will make itself available. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what else to say about that. Yep. It looks like the Apple music app with a slightly different font and some subtitles. So you can see which like, uh, piece it is like, okay, cool. Yeah. 
lately I've been I've been falling asleep to uh, uh, Pikmin speedruns, uh, and those are full of dun 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 as the the captain is uh, shepherding the <laughs> nice <laughs> Pikmin. Uh, so that has been my reenactment of uh, Pikmin, um, and masterful. Yeah, that's uh, it's excellent to fall asleep to when you can't fall asleep for other reasons. Nice. This week's episode of Code Completion is brought to you by Pennant. Calling all sports fans. Want to keep track of the season, but there's so many teams and not enough time? Check out Pennant. Pennant provides sports standings at a glance. Pennant displays league standings as a simple bar chart where the best teams rise to the top throughout the season. Of course, you can dig in deeper with team stats, game results, and more. Version 10 introduced the all-new, customizable My Pennant View, where you can build a wide selection of visualizations for any sport, division, or team. Unlock Pennant Premium to add as many blocks as you'd like and put any of them on your home screen as a widget. Whether you follow MLB, NFL, NBA, NHL, or MLS, Pennant has you covered with some more sports leagues and leagues coming soon. Thanks so much to Pennant for sponsoring Code Completion. Download Pennant on the iOS App Store today. So, Spencer, I've got a Code Completion tip for you. So, right. I'm sure you've had a uh, a do catch block, right, where you can go ahead and um, it's not do catch. Um, oh no, I've been doing too much uh, uh, JavaScript. No, I don't. Uh, programming. Lately. What is error handle? No, I was trying to make a joke of what is error handling. Oh, it is do catch. You made me worried because <laughs> in, in, I'm sorry. And in, in the in the masterful language of TypeScript, it's try catch. So I was like, oh shoot, I, uh, I like over adjusted. Um, so you see, no, you you're good. Gave you me got a, it. A minor panic attack. Uh, but <laughs> you're you're making it obvious that I haven't coded in Swift and. A hot minute, um, but uh, yeah, you have these these do catch blocks, right? Um, and you want to yeah. catch errors, and it's oftentimes you just have do catch, and you just print out, hey, this is my error. But sometimes you want to catch specific errors, like uh, for uh, instance, hey, the file was not found, right? And that's a useful error sure. to catch from like a URL handling point of view, or maybe the internet there's no connection. Uh, so you want to give a different error message to the user or maybe show them an entirely different UI. Well, it turns out you can do that very easily uh, by catching that specific error. Um, and you might be wondering, well, like, how how does that work? Uh, and it turns out it's fairly simple. Uh, the foundation framework overloads the pattern matching um, operator. Um, you might have heard of the pattern matching operator before, and this is what powers like cases in switch statements. Um, that's basically how you're able to like specify a range, and then the ma number magically matches mm -hmm. it. Um, my like one of my favorite things to do is if you want to know if an index is in bounds, you can ask array .indices pattern matching operator, which is tilde equals, uh, and then the index, and then that basically will match oh. if. The index is within the slice of the array, which is not necessarily from zero to ten. It might be from two to sure. seven. Um, so that's another great way of of uh, checking for bounds. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's very easy to use this in um, in uh, error matching as well. Um, and Ole Bogman, um, Begeman, Begeman. Uh, wrote an excellent article on this that kind of outlines his findings um, and like how it's actually implemented. And it turns out it's just a uh, foundation implementing it over on uh, Cocoa errors, URL errors, POSIX errors, and mock errors, and probably others. Uh, but yeah, it's just some man manual code that just makes that magic happen. Um, and that's really cool. Nice. So I think this is the case. It's been... I oh, So... If I were to like sit down and like do a bunch of like check against a bunch of errors, what I would probably do right now is just in the catch statement switch on the error or something. But can you like with this, if it's in the catch statement, could you do like catch whatever error and then another catch statement for another error and do it like that? And so it's like really separate. Exactly. So you have a, a separate okay. catch statement per error type and. Every okay. time you do that, it kind of whittles down the possibilities. Now, because errors are not typed um, in general in Swift, and this was a conscious, mm -hmm. like a conscious decision, um, so they won't ever really be typed. 
Um, that means that you always have to have that final catch statement um, that can rethrow, um, sure. or or it will just log, um, or it can fatal error or whatever you need it to do. Um, but uh, every other um, error uh, will kind of propagate through this process. Um, I guess the alternative is dealing with results, which is instead of a do catch, you have an actual result um, object right. or not object type um, struct uh container box lots of terms yeah is it an enum <laughs> i don't know yeah. i think it is an what enum. you call get mm -hmm. yeah um yeah you call and... get it either gives you the thing or, or not yeah and and that you can go ahead and have a switch statement that uh either sure. has dot success or dot failure and then you have the exact typed right. error um so if you do need typed errors they exist um but if you don't need typed errors uh, then do catch statements are excellent and you can use a very neat shorthand of just checking for the exact error that you're interested in uh, there um, and do something with it. Um, you can also like check for uh, like whole classes of errors. If you do like let error as Coco error, um, then you don't necessarily care what kind of Coco error, just that it's a Coco oh. error rather than a URL error or other. Um, so that's also a possibility. Sure. Um, so they're quite versatile, these these catch statements. Nice. That's super cool. And we got, a, I think, a bonus tip in there somewhere, too. So two for one. Yep. Um, I'll maybe save more details on the pattern matching operator uh, for another tip, uh, because I'm finding these tips harder and harder to come by. So if you have a tip, <laughs> uh, please please do hey. tweet at us uh, at codecompletion at mastodon.social um and let us know and then we will happily i will happily share it with everyone uh because that means i won't need to have a running running notes full of ever dwindling <laughs> tips um that i definitely don't panic for every every week um uh something i don't need to panic for though is our mini review corner and that's because today spencer bought something yes i did buy something so um i don't really know how to preface this i guess I like I like music. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna preface it. Um, but I don't like music. Four. Yes, exactly. Um, but I don't like it so much that I want to spend a ton of money. Like I'm not like an audiophile by any means. But um, I was looking for some. I have some closed back headphones, but I wanted to try some open back headphones just to kind of see how different they were. Um, and I'm like alone in my house all the time, so open back headphones wouldn't really disturb other people or anything. So went on kind of a, a little bit of a research hunt to see, you know, what kind of headphones were out there. And um, I ended up kind of settling on these uh, Hi-Fi Man Sundaras, uh, which look kind of, I think they look really nice. They're kind of an all metal uh, construction and they use a planar magnetic driver, which was half the reason I bought them which is just like a fancy piece of uh, a, like a fancy film with some traces on it between some magnets and they vibrate that way as opposed to kind of your your uh, traditional speaker driver cone shape. Mm -hmm. um, and they sound really good. I don't know. You know, there's supposed to be some benefit to them. But um, if, if, man, I was looking, there's like these headphone tier lists and everything and it was really high up that tier list. Uh, for the price, which was three hundred dollars, and you know, at the top of the tiers was like fifty thousand dollar headphones and stuff. <laughs> like, holy crap, people are way too into this. Uh, so, I, but I just wanted some good headphones, and they sound really good. And I'm not so discerning a listener that I can, you know, say, oh, these are very sparkly and very, you know, whatever, all the audiophile stuff. I just wanted some good headphones. So, and they sound good. Um, they are they're a little hard to drive, so learning about like impedance and the sensitivity was interesting and not really being able to play them out of my MacBook speakers very well. I had to crank the volume up. So kind of supplementally, I got like a, a DAC and amp set up for a couple hundred dollars and that's nice too. So now I can listen to them at, you know, way too loud if I wanted to, which I definitely don't, but they, they now have power. So it's good. Yeah. I don't really know what else to say other than like, Investing in some good headphones is cool because it really has like made me hear music like parts of music that I haven't really heard um, mm -hmm. other than like 
the new AirPods Pro are really good. Like, I think they're pretty good at that, too, of kind of revealing what's in the music. And I haven't really, other than, like, AirPods, I haven't had good headphones like that. So, yeah, kind of a fun journey that I'm really not going to get sucked into. Just, like, keyboards, like... I made a custom keyboard and I'm really happy with it and I'm not looking to... You're done. You satisfied that. Age. I'm done. I'm not going to go down the, you know, hey, I'm going to buy a $800, uh, 10,000 uh, pound weight of a keyboard. Like, I've, I have my end game keyboard and I have my end game headphones and I'm happy with them. So uh, it's crazy what audiophiles can uh, spend on, on DAX and amps and stuff. It's, yeah, and headphones, it's crazy. So, yeah. I meanwhile like the color orange. Um, hey, that's, there we that's go. Like the most into audio audio stuff uh, I am probably willing to get. Um, but yeah, like audio is such a niche part of uh, tech that is so rampant with pseudoscience. Um, like to yeah. the point where <laughs> oh, there's yeah. like scams left and right, um, oh, and yeah. like oh yeah, we gold plated uh the inside of this cable so that way you get better audio quality uh for this digital yeah. signal that has no like semblance of connection to like anything um whereas yeah. at the same time if you have a cell phone next to uh, a good old analog wire you're gonna hear doo -doo 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 every now and then so like <laughs> i get the concern but like the gold sure. platedness is not gonna fix that it's the fact that your phone is next to a cable um and electric fields are crazy and wires don't really have much to do with any of it i don't know it's complicated digital saved everything yeah um don't worry too much uh just get stuff that you like um and don't don't spend more than like how much did you say the, the top of the line was like fifty thousand dollars oh yeah dude it's oh, yeah. Uh, well okay so a couple couple of things we'll link that that headphone list and you can just peruse it at, at your leisure it's <laughs> insane <laughs> um Take but like there the, i remember by the heavy hitters yeah i mean this is like a b plus on their tier or whatever and everything around it is you know in the couple thousand dollar range but like the s tier was like fifty thousand thirty thousand it's like oh my gosh so we'll link that and there's also um just before i forget there's a linus tech tips video where they uh re like had everyone in their office test this audiophile network switch that they <laughs> <laughs> they swear made the audio sound better if you were streaming it from a NAS or something. It's like complete BS. It's just a rebranded TP-Link router, you know, that you get for a But they put hot glue so. in it. Yeah, they, no, they put a crystal in it. It's like, oh, man. Just in case, so, you, yeah, just it's... In case you open it up and then you're, like, curious about what's <laughs> making it power, right? <laughs> they really it's thought so about bad, it. so bad, dude. And some Illuminati stickers. Yeah, it's yeah. You can definitely get swindled hard for stuff like this. So, you know, I, I did like an an evening or two worth of research of like good companies to get headphones and the DAC for, and I got the the absolute cheapest DAC amp combo from this company. It's called Shit, which is C S C H I I T, which is hilarious, and they do it on purpose. But they have stuff on there that's you know their DAC and amps are like nine thousand dollars and stuff i'm like okay i will get the minimum because they say like that's good enough and it will power pretty much anything you don't need to go higher so i'm like cool is that the so, hagen does of of the audio market where they like purposely picked a german sounding name to sound foreign and fancy when it's an actual american company no it is an american company i think the story is like the the founder of the company his wife was like he said i don't know i'll find the link for how the story started but basically his thing was like whenever his wife would ask him what he's doing he's like i've got shit to do or something and she's like why don't you just name the company shit so you can say you've got shit to do because it's your company or something like that i'm like okay so kind of a funny uh company name yeah so yeah <laughs> I, I'm happy for you. It seems like you found a, a nice Thank pair. You. Uh, you've you've navigated the BS um, and you found some shit. So uh, that's that's found, all found anyone can shit. hope for in life, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and not getting swindled out of my money for some shit. Yeah, that's that's the hardest part, honestly. Um, 
So happens to the best of us. Yep. As always, I want to personally thank everyone for listening in this week. Please be sure to follow us on Macedon.social at Code Completion to, to know when new episodes go live, and feel free to toot at us if there's ever a topic you'd like for us to be into. Most importantly, as a small podcast, please be sure to share this with your friends and family who are also interested in any part of the process of app development. It's your support that enables us to continue doing this, and we hope to grow a healthy community around everything we discuss. Once again, I want to give my thanks to Spencer, who is at Spencer C. Curtis, that's S-P-E-N-C-E-R-C-C-U-R-T-I-S, for joining me this week. My name, once again, is Dimitri. You can find me at Dimitri Bunyol. Uh, that's D-I-M-I-T-R-I-B-O-U-N-I-O-L. And we'll see you all next week. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Uh, did you know that it turns out we use our, like, self-bricking themselves? Uh, and that made me, like, very scared for all... Like modern electronics. Wait, say that again. We use our what? So we use our self bricking themselves. Uh, so if you have a Wii U and you don't have it like plugged in and you don't use it every now and then, um, it turns out the NAND chips that they use um, oh. are losing charge at a high enough rate. Whereas at this point in time, the the memory cells will get corrupted and therefore the firmware won't boot. That sucks. Yep, and do you know what else uses similar technology? Nintendo Switch cartridges. My collection! Oh, <laughs> no, really? Well, yeah. So, so it's, it's, they just don't work? Well, not not like immediately. Uh, and it seems like if you have it um, like hooked up to power, like the, the chips themselves can, the EEPROMs, uh, can like refresh themselves. But over the course of like 20 oh. years uh they they have sure. like uh, a half-life which uh slowly starts deteriorating stuff um and yeah that this is not a problem for like old uh consoles because for old consoles the actual chip that they use is not an eprom it was just like an actually manufactured piece of silicon that had that as a rom like stamped into it uh so like the ones are actual physical etches uh, in the chip and the zeros are physical different etches uh, to give different different responses uh, but for modern stuff like we don't bother with that we have one type of chip and you program it yeah. and then you flash it right um, yeah and then it stays that way until it lo- starts like loses charge um, out of its little like memory cells um, and yeah it's kind of a terrifying like prospect that I did not ever think about uh until it came into the news uh and now i'm scared to touch the wii u which has been plugged in all these years but i don't know if it will turn on i don't want to find out yeah that's a bummer i uh yeah i feel slightly validated in buying digital copies it's just that now oh, don't for, don't Nintendo forget can the shut SSD down their card. stores <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh, well yes that too the ssd yeah the the sd card but also just nintendo shutting down their stores and not giving me downloads so you lose either way no one no one wins in these situations that's yeah awesome we'll just have to buy a uh, ocarina of time for the 17th time in 40 years <laughs> you know what sucks is i'll do it <laughs> oh probably at least now it's a subscription right so i'll i'll keep paying for ocarina of time for 40 years um and and still have access to it yeah love it love love the subscription model it's so great i'm so glad nintendo did that yeah whatever i i was already paying for it for online not that i play smash anymore but yeah yeah i'm i'm kind of i i think i'm more sad by the state of like copyright law that prevents like old classic consoles and yes. video games from ever really entering public domain at this point. Um, like someone has to willingly do it for it to happen. It will never happen like naturally uh, like it has for media yeah. up until I would say 30 years ago uh, before the music industry became a big thing and ruined it for everyone. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah. And that's like, that kind of stuff is like, why i don't really feel bad about like emulating games that i have because it's like uh i own it 
the form yeah. in which I own it is which purchase nebulous. will make you will make you uh, guilty of it. Is it the fourth or the fifth time you bought it? Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna do exactly, it for you, dude. Yeah, yeah. So and man, don't get me started on just Nintendo's just absolutely inane freaking rules about not letting me copy saves off of my Switch and me getting my Switch banned because of that. Just trying to protect my saves and stuff. What? Okay. He's Ooh, lying. He's trying to that. cheat at Smash. I was not, dude. <laughs> Look, I, I think I told the I think I told this story the first time that I went over this, but my little brother, when when you know we were younger and stuff, he would, you know, turn on the the sixty four, the GameCube or whatever, and overwrite my saves. So I have this like deep rooted fear about my saves going away since like my childhood. So that's why I like want to back up my saves and stuff. So, yeah. As a kid, sucks, man. As a kid, I thought I was really gaming the system. Uh, when I got a GameCube, and I didn't get one memory card, I got two memory cards. So that way, my Zelda game didn't have three files; it had six files that you hey. could save to because you could just swap the memory cards and whatever was in slot A. Um, and then yeah, you have you have uh, more files to play with. Um, I guess that's another yeah. thing that maybe those memory cards don't work anymore and all my save data from my childhood is gone. Whatever shall I do? Yeah, that's a good point. I won't be yeah. able to show my I children know that, like, how the, far I got. Um, <laughs> yeah, for real though. I think the um, the game cartridges on like the um, original Pokemon games for like the Game Boy, I think they have like a CMOS battery or something in them for time. And I think if that dies, your save is gone too so like mm -hmm. it's a thing for sure i i think i could be wrong i think my copy of pokemon red i tried to pull it up one time and there was, it was just like new game i was like oh okay i'm pretty sure i didn't delete my save but i could have i don't know so yeah. yeah and i don't know if it'll even work at that point right yeah that's a good question i didn't try to play it and like save again or anything so i don't know like once you turn I mean, it, it off, turned it's on, kind but of I don't know if it would again. save. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well could be. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, and like it's I, not I a guess good solution. I, I guess I'm thinking about this a lot too because um, I, I recently uh, turned on my Switch for a very long time, for the first time in a very long time, um, and I was playing around with some of those um, the the Game Boy emulator that they added. Uh, in the Game Boy Advance one. Yeah. Um, and I noticed that it took like a very long time for the emulator itself to like save data, um, like playing the Minish Cap. Like when you hit save, it's like saving. Oh. One, two, three, complete. And I'm like, really? Even even older technology, when you're saving a matter of bytes, uh, like save data for a Game Boy game. Uh, in fact, most Game Boy games didn't even have like a saving screen, right? Um, it was just more yeah. or less instant. Um, that was yeah. quite surprising because it it indicates that they didn't really know how long it would take to save, so they just put in a buffer of time, right? And the developer in me like immediately <laughs> spots sure, dude. that that solution uh, to that cruddy problem is like you don't know how long it's gonna like how long it takes to flash. Uh, the little bit of hardware yeah. to like save those bits so you just wait five seconds and by then you're more or less guaranteed uh but like if it were a second shorter you're maybe not right uh that that's kind yeah. of the vibe i got from that kind of interaction and that was very suspect uh to say the least yeah that reminds me i man i can't remember from what game it was i'll i'll i may know the youtube video i got this from I swear there was like a game, I want to say like either a Pokemon game or maybe a Final Fantasy game where like the saving was inconsistent. And so what they did was they saved the same data like eight times or something over and over again to make sure everything was written correctly. I could be wrong about that, but like that seems like some hacky workaround that they would probably do back in like the 80s or 90s. I think I remember that exact statement. Um, I, I also don't know which like uh which video yeah. that was from i'm sure you could find it that that's like exactly what you needed to do back in the day um and yeah that's that's one way around that problem yeah 
I've uh, I've finally switched over to um, trying to use DuckDuckGo, and I can't tell if the search results are just like I'm not googling things well, or uh, if the results are. You not need as good a as you need a duck things. Googling is for that other thing. Did I say Google? You said you're googling things. Did I say Google things. Oh, <laughs> uh, I meant search. That's crazy. That's how ingrained <laughs> it is, man. Yeah, yeah, I can't find it. Tissues. But... Yeah. Or not tissues. Uh, Kleenex. That's the one. Kleenex. Yeah. Duracells. Yeah. Tupperware. Tupperware. Yeah. Oh, thanks for listening, everyone. Bye. Bye.